Good day everyone, Dr. Blob here. Today I finally can get over this idea I had a couple of months ago which was driving me crazy. I finally will be free. Ok, what's this idea about? Well, allow me to answer your question with another question. Where do we come from and where are we going? It's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? I don't mean anything deep by that. Neither do I want to predict what's the supposed past of a fictional world we all enjoy. At least not now. No, I meant it literally. How has our trip been in the land of terror? At least considering Rhodes Island and the Doctor. So, taking into consideration side story and special events, I come with this idea. A roadmap showing the path we have taken so far in the story. Originally, I planned to make a pseudo timeline, but I was insanely worried about it mostly because of my inability to do anything math related. Luckily for me, I was able to find three sources to get the time frame from, which saved me a lot of work and time. A huge shout out to all three of them. If you want to give them a read, the links will be on the description. However, while very useful, not all the dates are in sync with each other, which is understandable. Do you know how many attempts there were at mapping Hyrule's timeline? <laughs> So, because of this, I won't be blindly repeating what is listed there, but rather I will be coming to my own conclusions, based on character development, road's location by that point in the story, and the means used to reach each destination. Mostly because, while road is constantly moving, there are other ways for operators to move around as well, namely the bad guy, which has been confirmed to be used to deliver operators either to their direct destination or halfway through. So with that information in mind, and while at it, I will be pointing out the moment I believe certain operators joined Rhodes Island properly. For example, while being on board for some unspecified amount of time, ella did not become an actual operator until before the events in Casimir's, where the doctor personally promoted her. So with that explained, let us start. And this is the doctor's path in terror, that we know of. Kinda. No fancy backgrounds this time around, there is much info to get through and I don't want to be in the way of it. Long before the current recorded history ever started, there was a previous civilization. We don't know who they were exactly, but there are hints here and there regarding their technological advancement, which might be even more advanced than current Aegis technology. However, that was not enough for them to survive what is currently known as the first Great Catastrophe wiped out the previous civilization from the face of the planet and filled it with the mysterious mineral we know as Originium. During said times, the Doctor and Priestess presumably created both PRTS and Rhodes Island itself for an unknown purpose, probably related with the aforementioned first catastrophe. Some unknown time later, and as a result of said endeavor, the Doctor was placed into the sarcophagus, in what later would become Ursus. We don't know why they were placed there, but reading Priestess' words, it was probably a result of their previous efforts, which resulted in them saving the world. Somehow. Another amount of time passes by. The sarcophagus is found in Ursus and a team led by Calcit works on it. Presumably, the first awakening of the Doctor take place around this time. The next solid information we have of the Doctor is by the time Babel was formed, where the Doctor was already making a name for themselves as their tactician becoming more and more detached from his operator as more ruthless tactics were needed. Something worth pointing out is that, as seen in flashback taking place in this time period, the Doctor is far from the cold and calculating warmonger we were originally led to believe, but rather someone who took an almost mechanical approach to his tactics. This can be seen in how, despite being almost killed by a traitor, the Doctor still believed it would be better for him to continue living as well as showing a slight hint of remorse when learning Said Sarkas decided to take his own life instead. While a long shot, it could be assumed their personality has little to no change from both versions, with them taking the characteristics needed to do the job. Ergo, they have a really plastic mind. This part of their life ended, with Teresa's death and the dismantling of Babel. Then they were placed back into the sarcophagus by Calcit herself. While it is said this was done to heal them, we are not told how they were hurt to begin with. It will be around another 10 years for them to awaken once more. Yet, either by design, by what happened before the cryosleep, or by damage caused by the ongoing siege of Chernobyl, 
the Doctor awakens with amnesia. Despite this, they still prove to retain their strategic mind, being able to turn the tables on their situation and managing to flee the city, though not without some heavy casualties. From then, they rejoin Rhodes Island and take a one-week trip towards Lungmen, where the events of the story properly start. I would like to take a moment to point out that, before the start of the game, there were already operators working to keep Rhodes safe, as well as those training to join the ranks. While some information is not too clear about it, these are the operators I believe were already on board by the time we start the game. I am not including characters who are merely on temporary stay, like the Penguin crew or the LGD, but will count teams contracted to stay on board on Lyson, like the Black Steel Gears. This is because some characters join roads at different points in time. For example, Croissant is mentioned to be aboard long enough to act as an onboard teacher, while Hoshiguma delivers a bow of alliance after her LE2, implying that they did become Rhodes personnel at some point in time. However, save points are not that clear for everyone, so for now I will focus on those I can corroborate. Also, because of its fractured nature, vignette events like Operation Intelligence, Children of Ursus and Vigilo will not be properly pointed out. But when I think one of their vignettes took place, I will mark the possible time frame they could have happened. Now back to the story. The reunion chapter takes place, where Rhodes puts a stop to an immortal schemes by mere chance. We spent some time eating in the aftermath cleaning, not without eating some of members to our crew. This moment is very important though, as this is the moment Rhodes Island makes a name for itself worldwide, beyond being some charity organization with some shady background. While officially, Rhodes' participation was skipped to a minimum to avoid international tensions, the truth was known by pretty much anyone looking for it. A fine example of this is Silver Daddy himself, who only knew of Rhodes as the pharmaceutical who took care of his sister's infection, but who grew way more interested after the Chernobyl incident, specifically of the doctor, culminating in the Break the Ice event. This is where I believe more special operators joined our ranks, either because they could see Rhodes as a safe place, or because they were curious of their actual objectives, or merely as a new place to laze around. Whatever their reasons, they all flocked towards Rhodes Island because of their role in the reunion conflict. Once things have finally wrapped up, Rhodes finally depart from Lumen, around a month after the events of Chapter 8. Four to five months pass by without any major developments. By the start of summer, the Casimir's Major begins, followed shortly after by the events of the Night's Treasure. Then we got to see the Doctor and company enjoy their time in Siesta, where the meme about the Doctor's vacation being anything but began with the Obsidian Festival. About one month later, in the tumultuous country of Bolivar, the events of Dos Soles takes place. It is interesting to note how Chen's character development occurred within the span of six months. It wouldn't be until autumn when another event takes place, Twilight of Bulomant where Suzuran get dispatched from the first time as an operator and the first time we heard of the former reunion leader, Madrock. Less than a month later, she and her squad will be saved and scout by elite operator Logos. Back in Lungmen, a rather exotic sawing takes place, making the events of God of Brawl. In Casimir's, the preliminaries end with the sudden return of Margaret Nerl into the fray. Shortly after, Rhodes Island arrives at the Night Territory to perform business discussions. While an important event in itself, Casimir's is perhaps the event in which the Doctor had the least involvement with while being present. While busy, as seen in the daily missions, their impact in the story doesn't go further than they try to help Malkevich here and there. With the major over, Rhodes departs towards their next destination and a new batch of operator to add to their ranks. Here I want to make yet another parenthesis. While recruited in this event, neither Nerl nor her sisters joined Rhodes Island just then. Nerl stayed to continue her work to help Casimir's, and her family stayed with her. However, their archives explain that both, Maria and Sophia, later joined Rhodes Island on their own, yet some time before Nerl. The reason is yet to know, but I think we might have yet another chapter in the Night Saga. Around this time, in Victoria, Granny is dispatched along other fellow operators to handle a situation in Caledon making the events of a light spark in darkness. Shortly after, the events of Chapter 9 take place, marking Victoria as the next destination for Rhodes Island. It is also here that we lose Talula to the newly reformed reunion. 
backpack will spend half a month on standby, drop from the military, and then head to Longman to get in touch with her old friend. She will arrive a bit too late, but she will be put in contact with Rhodes Island office and then sent towards her friend Chen Chen. Near the end of the year, the doctor is dispatched for Kejerak, invited by the Carlan company to assist in some simple work and enjoy some rest. Continuing with the meme. And this is where we are currently at, at the beginning of the year 1098, waiting for the events of chapter 10 and beyond to take place. However, there are other events accounted for yet to be properly placed, so while I ignore what will happen in Victoria, it is safe to assume we will be able to walk away from it, if in good or bad standing is yet to be seen. The first thing I believe will happen will be the contact made by the Doctor and Amelia with Mama Jones representatives, followed it shortly by their meeting with Kudeno. Around this time, somewhere in Sargon, four aliens will arrive at Terra, where they will eventually meet and befriend Rhodes operators. It is also heavily implied that, while still employed by BSW, Franca and Liskram are pretty much members of Rhodes by this point. During this period of time, probably since the beginning of the year, the events of Minefield's prison could take place, as Rhodes will be at a relatively close distance for Silence and company to perform their prison break and have a place to run to with relative safety. Shortly after these events, Rhodes will be passing by Minos, giving them a nice window to participate in the interlocking competition. From here, Rhodes will take two possible routes, either north towards Colombia or south towards Iberia. Considering there are two major events happening in both cities, either one is equally possible. However, it is said that Dorothy's vision happens 1497 days after Saria left Rhinelabs, around 4 years. Considering that Ifrit was smaller than Silence back then, but now she is recorded to be taller, we can assume the Diabolic Crisis happened about 1-2 to two years before the beginning of the game, which gives a window of 2 years to happen. Enough time for Rhodes to keep their path towards Iberia, where Skadi's expedition to Salviento will eventually take place. Around that same period of time, the Doctor will go enjoy some vacation in Gabriel's home, starting with a bang. Sometime later, the events of Guiding Ahead will take place, though I haven't properly read about it, since I don't want to get spoiled, so this one could be very wrong. From here, I am completely going on my own ideas, since the information is very limited. Sometime in the future, two major events will happen, as in story events, not actual events. The Bolivar Grand March and Lava Search for the Swiss Siblings. The first will mark the sudden growth of the A1 team members, with all the baggage that includes. Spawned from this, a more mature Lava and Cruz will look for Dusk, on Nian's behalf, making the event of who is real. Invitation to Wine will follow literal days after said events. Some unknown amount of time later, Gladia will finally find the Golden Fleet she mentioned by the end of Undertides, the Stultifera Navis, resulting in Lauretina regaining her sanity in a more permanent way. How? Dev do I know, I don't want to get spoiled yet. And that's pretty much it. The only event I couldn't pin down properly was Lingering Echoes, but considering Heavy Alter is there, I will say it happened around the same time of who is real. And that's the path the Doctor and Rhodes had taken so far. Clearly, some events could be different as I theorized here, but that's part of the deal with theory crafting. Don't go saying this is the definitive timeline, for all I know, a canonical one what could be released as the making of this video. It would have been the last time I have seen that happen. While Terra is a rather big world, it is interesting to see how Rhodes manages to keep itself busy while traversing its lands, managing to keep their characters growing and are interested in them be. Not to mention all the mysteries it holds. But what do you think? Do you think some events could be different? Or that Rod could have taken another route? Be sure to share it down below, and let's see if we can continue mapping things out until Hypergriff decides to answer this directly. Until then, this has been Dr. Blob, bidding you all a great time. And please, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you want to talk about this or any other possible theories or whatnot, be sure to join my Discord. I might not be too active, but I will be sure to answer whatever you might want to talk about. No matter what might be, so long it's well talked and not rude, I will do my best to expand on it. With that I thank you for your time, and as always, stay healthy everyone.